Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ira Farisha. I am an account executive at Samdabi Bahad. As a new account executive, me and my friends are required to do the segment reporting and internal reporting for the month 20th of 30th June 2022. Before we start, I will let my team members to introduce themselves and then we'll get into it. Hi, my name is Omar Hadi bin Saudi. I am an account executive from Samdabi Bahad. As everyone knows, Sam Debe is one of the largest companies in Malaysia. It is founded in the year of 1990 and providing various services in many sectors including the industry sectors, motor sectors, health and logistics sectors. The Sam Debe Bahad has over 20,000 employees working and is operating in many countries across the Asia-Pacific region. It is also not a secret that the Sam Debe Bahad has won various awards but most of the awards for investor relations. Sam Baby Berhad has proven to be one of the best companies in regards of investor relations such as communication, combining the finances and marketing strategies. Sam Baby Berhad also one of the largest companies in Malaysia that listed in Bursa Saham Malaysia with a capitalization of 15.17 billion Malaysia ringgit. There are four missions to focus on. First, it is to develop a winning, portable, sustainable business. Second, it is to deliver superior financial returns through operational excellence and high performance standards. Third, it is to deliver or subscribe to good corporate governance and high ethical values. And the last one is to provide an environment for our people to realize their full potential. Next, I will present in the management approach for the perspective of factors to case to consider having a segment report. First, it consists the nature of business activity, assistant of manager responsible for the activity and information presented to the board of directors. Looking at the first factor, it is determined nature of business activities that is identified by any activity carried out by an entity with the main objective of profit maximization. In this slide, you can see the board of manager in Sam Bibi Bahad with their positions. Each segment is controlled by the segment manager who are responsible for ensuring the performance of the segment and making direct contact with the CODM. And the last factor, it is information presented by the board of directors. The CODM shall refer to the reports assessed by the board of director as it contains reliable information regarding to the overall performance of the entity. Next, I will present to you the nature of business activity. Looking by the nature of business activities, these three factors are included in this constitution. As you can see here, firstly, the nature of the product service. It is included to the industrial, motor, logistic, healthcare, and many more. Secondly, Nature of Production Process Sam Dubi Healthcare in Selangor currently offer health consult service by import facilities from Indonesia and Hong Kong. Also, they are using the technology equipment. The third one is the type of class of customer for the product and service. The company class of customer may consist of supplier, business partner, government authorities and NGO. It is also including the domestic and international barriers. In segmentary reporting, there are two types of segments. The first one is business segment. It distinguishes the component engaged in providing individual product or service of a group or related or services subject to risk and return. In geographical segment, it distinguishes the component engaged in providing an individual product or services within a particular economic environment subject to the risk and return. In business segment, SAMDABI have four major areas that they do provide services, which are motor, logistic, industrial, and healthcare. In motor, they have assembly of uh, vehicles, after sales services, and rental of vehicle. In logistic, they provide management of port facilities terminal handling and other related services. In industrial, they provide sales and rental, services for equipment, engineering and service, 
and the provision of essential services. In healthcare, they provide healthcare service by investing in Ramsey Samdabi Healthcare Group. As a geographical factor, Samdabi Protection operates in Malaysia and Indonesia in this region, and the HQ is in Malaysia. The demand for palm oil in, is mainly from China, India, Indonesia, and the European Union due to its cholesterol free, wholesome goodness, and reasonable price. Palm oil is mainly used as cooking oil, shortening margarine, while palm kernel oil is used as a raw material for non edible products such as soaps, detergent, and cosmetics. Sam Dabi has extensive trading and manufacturing interests in Hong Kong, Singapore, Philippines, and Australia. It is also operated in several other countries such as Thailand and Egypt. The group chief executive is Dr. Jeffrey Salen Davidson. Each division, chief or decision making, was led by different people, which is industrial, Din Mahmat, in healthcare, Peter Ho Kapeng, in logistics, Liu Tim Huat, in moto, by Andrew Basham. But every chief or decision maker, they have few responsibility. They review the operating results and internal management report regularly. They making decisions by providing strategic advice and guidance. They allocate resources and performance of the operating segment. They monitor progress against plans to ensure that the company attains the objective. In order for us to identify the reportable segment and the non-reportable segment, we're going to apply 10% threshold test and 75% uh, revenue basis only. For the 10% threshold test, the item presented separately as reportable segment if they pass the 10% test. If less than 10%, it will be reported in other segments. For 75% test, after determine, determining the reportable segment, the total external revenue attributable to those reportable segments to, to at least 65% of the total external report. If less than 75%, additional reportable segments should be identified even they are, they, they do not meet the 10% threshold. Now, I would like to present the segment revenue on 30 June 2021 as per Sam W. Berhad annual report. As you can see here, it has seven segments revenue that consists of industrial, motors, logistic, healthcare, property, plantation, and others. As you can see there, the total of the segment revenue of external is 67,288 and the intersegment is 725. Now we go through to the revenue basis of 10% threshold test. The threshold test in this segment revenue of external for industrial is 40%. For the motors is 24%. For the logistic, it is 0.3%. Um, for the healthcare, it is not applicable. The property is 13% and the plantation is 22%. And the other is 0.1%. For the reportable segment or non-reportable segments, the industrial is exceed 10%. It is reportable segment. For the motors, it is exceed to 10%. It means it is a reportable segment. The logistic is not reportable segment because it is lower than 10%. Healthcare is not applicable, which means it is a non-reportable segment. For the property, we can see it is 10%, that means it is reportable segments. The property and the plantation is a reportable segments and the other is non-reportable segments. We got the observation and conclusion for reportable segments and the non-reportable segments. So, for the 70% test, the total revenue of reportable segments divided by the total external revenue all segments and we multiply to 100 so, we will get the 99.6%. After we apply the test of the 10% threshold and the 75% test, this is how the table looks like. We have four, the, all the four non reportable segments, we put as a sep, we put it as separately, and the other non reportable segment we put under one column. Basically, there are advantages and disadvantages of segment reporting. The advantage of segment reporting the shareholder are able to gain the, and overview the firm's operation. The shareholder able to gain information about the company. Investors are exposed to the future plans of the company. 
revenue are identified separately as a disadvantages, they have chance of losses, the data that were uh, put in are manip can be easily manipulated, and there could be a misuse of authority. Right, let's discuss about the basis preparation of interim report, which consists of three bases which is first integral, the second one is discrete, and the third one is the combination of the two. Integral is the fraction of annual report while discrete treats the interim report in desperate period. For some the B, they are using the discrete method which explains why they are preparing the financial report or interim report in quarterly basis period to prepare the interim report. It must comply to the MFRS 134 issued by the Malaysian Accounting Standard Board. The function of interim report is to predict and describe the financial position and the financial performance and able to measure the revenue and expenses the same way we prepare the usual financial report. There is two accounting policies that is currently used by Sandwi Berhad and can be looked by the perspective of property fund and equipment and inventory. For the property fund and equipment, the company is using the cost model and the depreciation will be measured using the straight line basis over its estimated useful life. While for the inventories, it will be measured at the comparison of its cost and the net realizable value which is lower. Equipment and motor vehicle and spare parts and accessories will be using specific identification basis and weighted average basis respectively. Before we look into the report prepared by Time Derby, we're going to see the items we should include in the report. Each heading and subtotal was included in the most recent annual financial statement. The selected explanatory notes required by the MFS 134 in three financial reporting that was focused on the significant changes in the financial uh, position since last reporting date. The basic and diluted earning per share on the face of the statement is the entity presents the item of profit or loss in a separate segment. The report should also be prepared in a consolidated basis if the most recent annual financial statement was a consolidated statement. Attached here is the report prepared by Zaman Dhabi. The first one is respect for the statement of compensation income and the second one is for the statement financial position. For the interim report, for the current interim, the reporting period is 3 months, which is from 1st July 2021 until 30th September 2021. The comparative year end, uh, the reporting period is for 12 months, which is from 1st July 2020 till 30th June 2021. For the last part of the presentation, we will need to do the two adjustments in the first quarter by using the statement of financial pollution as at 30 June 2022. The first adjustment is about the depreciation. As per stated in the statement of the financial position, the cost of plant and machinery is 1.1 billion with its accumulated depreciation of 726 billion. It is also determined that the company depreciates all of its plant and machinery on a straight line basis at 20 per annum on a yearly basis on a yearly basis and none in the year of disposal. However, on 1st September 2021, Sandra Bibrahat decided to dispose one of its machinery with a current amount of 200 million for a profit of 50 million. The machine was initially purchased by the company at the cost of 250 million. On 30 September 2021, the company acquired a new machine at a cost of 500 million. For the disposal, the current amount of all machine will be decarbonized and the new machine will be capitalized as a part of plant and machinery. As it is satisfied the requirement of plant and equipment based on MFRS 116. Therefore, the current amount that we will get is 611500 million as set 30 September 2021. For the second adjustment, it involved inventory. On the 1st July 2021, Sanabi Brahat had added ending inventory of 8.346 billion ringgit 
every year, the price of its inventory will change. On the 30th September 2021, the company had inventories of 150 million units at cost, one ringgit 60 cent per unit. On 30th September 2021, the net value of the inventories is one ringgit and 45 cent per unit. The expected net realizable value of the inventories at 30th June 2021 is one ringgit and 65 cent. So on the 30th September 2021, the value of the inventory should be recognized at its net realizable value as it is lower compared to the net cost amounting to 275,500 million, which is 145 cents times by 150 million units. The loss of inventory is 22.5 million should be recognized in statement of profit and loss. On 30th of June 2022, the value of inventory will be recognized using the cost of 244 million. Therefore, Standard Bridge should revert the 22.5 million inventory loss that was previously recognized in the statement of profit or loss. This is the extract, the statement of financial position for the current interim and the cooperative period. That's all from us. Thank you.